headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm Ramsey personality, George Campbell, joined by my good friend, Dr. John Deloney. What up? That's what up? doctor with two PhDs, in case you're wondering. And George with two lenses in his one pair of glasses. That's all you need. Sorry, I don't know what to tell you, John. I know. How are we doing? I, I couldn't spend my life in academia. It just felt so grueling. Oh, yeah. You should see on the other side of it. Here you are now. When you and I had the same job. We're both YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, Joke's so on good. you. Man, I this showed you fun. guys, didn't I? Well, this is a, this is a real treat, John. Uh, it's been a fun week pre-launching my new book, Breaking Free from Broke. I'm first-time author. Pre-launching? Yeah. You're launching. Well, it's not launched into the world yet, but you can pre-order it. That's what I was trying to say. Yes, you can triple stamp a double stamp. When it comes to pre-selling this incredible book, dude. Yeah, it's been fun. The response has been awesome. And if people are wondering, what is this about, Breaking Free from Broke? How? Here's the question I get. How is this different than the Total Money Makeover? Well, the Total Money Makeover has been around for decades. Mm -hmm. And I followed the principles in the book. And I lay out the baby steps real quick. But this is not the baby steps rehash. This is me unpacking the financial industrial complex that is keeping people <laughs> broke and i had every excuse and justification uh, with a lot of empathy and i want to talk at people uh with people and at people and give them the book that i wish i had when i was you know in my 20s and now in my 30s are going this is what people are really dealing with here's how the system is designed to keep you broke here's how to get out and i did it and 10 million did too there's the social proof and i i think what's helpful about this that is going to be helpful for me and and honestly helpful for me and helpful for it's a book I can hand to my son who's 13 who's just now entering into the the, the, the system right um, they're already going to start sending him credit card offers oh for sure already getting you know college stuff oh, it's, it's 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 a mad it's a zoo but when total money makeover came out you had your neighbors that guy had a nicer van, you know, with like the wood on the side of it. And there was a guy at your church who had a thing. And then you had a buddy who had a friend who was a banker that said, hey, you need to get an adjustable rate mortgage, that kind of thing. Now it's coming at us a thousand different directions all at the same time. You don't have real estate. You don't have passive income. You don't have crypto. Oh, my gosh. You're just putting money. So in a, much in FOMO. A, it's everywhere. And I, I am an old man and I can't escape it. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I, I, we talked about it the other night. I, for those of you listening, I um, count myself pretty fortunate that I get to sit by Dave, you know, hours a week, and he's a, a, somebody I call a buddy. So if I'm about to buy something or I'm thinking through something, I can just ask Dave Ramsey, which is pretty amazing. And I've also called George Camel and like on his cell phone. When Dave like, didn't pick up, he was like, "I'll try George." Nah, Dave. Yeah, we don't. I don't call Dave when he's on the golf course. But hey, George, help me walk through this thing because I'm thinking about doing this, and if I move this over here, and so you're somebody that I trust with my family's money, and so I'm really grateful to have this book in dealing with the things that we're all dealing with all at the same time right now. It's exciting, mm, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've I've said that the the gap between financial stress and financial peace is littered with myths and traps and distractions and noise. And I just wanted to cut through all that and tell you the truth and go in depth and hit every objection that you've before you can even get to it. I just want to get there. Here, yep, I hear you. Here's what the truth is about money with tons of research, with tons of humor. So I'm excited to get this book in people's hands and help them break free from broke and unchain and untether from this broken financial system and deprogram and unplug from the matrix. So if you want to check it out, you can go to RamseySolutions.com slash store and pre-order today for just 20 bucks, and we're going to bribe you with $100 in free bonus items, including access to my newest talk, Show Me the Money, exclusive access to an online private event and Q&A with me in January, as well as an enhanced audiobook. John, we're doing a real fun uh, produced version of the audiobook and ebook. You get that all for free on top of three months of every dollar premium for new users only. So... Hey, if uh, that's not enough, I don't know what when is. is this, when does it actually hit the stores? It hits the streets January 16th. January 16th, okay. Yeah. We'll get the ebook to you uh, a few weeks early if you pre-order as well. So there, it won't be there in time for Christmas, but it's worth getting for folks for Christmas with a little printout. Well, I was just thinking, um, <laughs> my book, Building an Unanxious Life, that's, that's, that might be hard to buy for Christmas. To be like, hey... Uh, I was thinking about what I could get you, and well, you're in good company, John, with a book called Breaking Free. <laughs> you're falling apart, so here you go. But this is a book that I could order, and I could order ten of them for all my cousins, or all my nephews, or all my grandkids. And there's Christmas, and I could have the little card and and hand it to them, and then kind of when the smoke clears from Christmas, they're gonna get it in the mail, 
a couple weeks later and they'll go, yeah, all right. When and, it's new year, new me. Yeah. And I think that's a, I think, I don't know. I'm just excited for it, man. I think it's going to be a, I actually think it's a great Christmas gift that will show up right when all the smoke clears from Christmas and people are holding those credit card statements or they're in a house and their parents are banging their head against the wall. Why'd we do it again? Why'd we do it again? And you're 19 or 20 and you're heading back to college. This is going to be perfect. I appreciate that, man. That's very kind. Well, go check it out at RamseySolutions.com slash store. I, I guarantee you'll love it. If you don't, I don't know that you can get a refund. But you, you can. can. You can yell at me on Twitter or whatever you guys want to do. That's fine with me. Um, but, John, before we get to calls, in the book, I lay out a lot of ex- ex- the things that people – that I've heard on this show when they call in and they say, well, John, what about inflation and the housing market and the cost of higher education and the Fed? And did you see the guy in the White House, what he's doing? And there's all kinds of really good reasons as to why you can't get ahead and why it's someone else's problem. And something I've been telling myself and other people is that it's not all your fault, but it is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that I feel like crosses over into your world because in your new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, one of the choices you have to make every day is choosing reality. Uh, Right. And that comes to a point where you have to say, there's a lot of things I can't control. And the one thing I can't control is the guy in the mirror. And that means he's going to do something about it. He's not going to wait around. I get that question on my show a lot. Like, oh, I'm supposed to just sit down and tell my husband. It's like, yes. Would you know how hard that's? Yes. But do you know how hard living your life is? scared to come home is right you know how how hard your life is um struggling with nutrition and exercise programs but i get it it's it's a matter of choosing your heart so yeah for folks like me who grew up with two parents who are freaking amazing who love me but who didn't have the tools and didn't have the plan were just literally doing what the the next right thing they were told and i didn't have a plan um yeah, it's hard to suddenly submit yourself to a plan that's not sexy and not shiny. It's way more fun and way more adventurous to be like, oh, okay, I got to get this in a portfolio. Bro, you have no portfolio business. You owe 40 grand, right? Or in my case, $100,000 of student loans. You don't, you don't need to be thinking about passive income, right? Mm. So having a plan like this is so rad, and it comes down to that choose your heart, man. You can live a life where you can't breathe and your body won't let you sleep because you owe money, or you can choose your heart and say, okay, for three years, I'm going to work four jobs. And it's going to be miserable. It's going to be miserable. And on the back end, haha, suckers, no one will own me but me. And that's, that, that's where millions and millions and millions of us are right now. That's very freeing. Yeah, if you want margin, if you want options, if you want peace in your life, you want freedom with your time and your money, you're going to have to work for it. And you're going to have to bridge that gap between financial stress and financial peace. And there's so many myths and traps along the way. So I encourage you guys to check out my new book, Breaking Free from Broke, at RamseySolutions.com slash store. I hope it helps as many people as your books have, John. Well, listen, is, we, we see it all the time. Nobody's coming for you. And it's easy to go, what do you do now? This is the roadmap. Pick it up. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Dr. John Deloney. This is your show, America. Give us a call at 888-825-5225. Tristan is up in Cleveland, Ohio. Tristan, welcome to the show. Hi. I um, recently had 319K in student loan debt forgiven. Whoa. I have about 30, I know, right? I have 30, How long did that take? I'm curious. 
10 years. Okay. 10 years. Public service loan forgiveness. Cool. Good and for you. So I currently have about 33000 in personal debt. Me and my husband, we had we refinanced a family home we inherited for about 50000 And at this point, I'm thinking about us buying a new house, running out our home. Wanted to get you guys' thoughts on that. So you have this $33,000 personal debt. Any other debt? No, that's it. How much money do you guys have in the bank? Uh, about 22000 Okay. So the question is, how quickly can we get rid of this debt and get an emergency fund saved up before we jump into this dream of home ownership? Okay. Because that's so my worry is buying, you go into this broke. Buying the house. Yeah. Because it feels like you have twenty two grand, which I assume was going to be your down payment. Um, we we actually the down payment would only be a total of like fifteen thousand total. And so, what would the mortgage be? About twenty two hundred a month. And that's on a thirty year. Yes. Okay. What's your household income? Household income is about two hundred thousand a year. Okay. Personal is about one hundred and fifty. Awesome. You guys have a great income. So, what is the urgency to jump into the house purchase right now versus waiting a year from now when we've cleared the deck, we have no debt, fully funded emergency fund, and a bigger down payment? I have a three-year-old who's going to be turning four soon, and we live in a really bad neighborhood. Lots of violence. Can we go rent in a better neighborhood for a year while we do this? Renting yeah. right now is going to still run you about 1800 You make $200,000. Here's how I know you can do that, because it's exactly what we did. I had a two- and a three-year-old, and we lived in a residence hall full of college students. The smells are still stuck in my nose. And... We weren't ready to buy a house, so we moved, and we moved into a 900-square-foot rent house. Was it fun? Gotcha. No. Did my wife cry? Yes. Did we end up having a real down payment for a home a year later? Absolutely. Here's my worry, Tristan, is that if you oh, do this right way, now— next next year, around August, I'll get like a lump sum payment from incident that occurred. It'll, it'll be about 25000 Awesome. Well, let's add that to the down payment. August of next year, you'll be able to put a big down payment down. I think you're you're itching to get out. What was that? Skip out on the fifteen thousand dollar down payment option now because they're they're willing to take three and a half percent down. Of course, they're willing to. Please don't put three and a half percent down on your house, please. You make too much money to be making broke people decisions. And my worry is if you continue down this path five years from now, you're still going to be broke because we never really cleaned up the mess or changed our behavior. But we could fix this really quickly. I mean, this is a very solvable problem, making 200 grand, and you have 22 to throw at the debt today. So let's say you drain that down to 1,000. Within the next two paychecks, you've paid off your debt. Maybe four paychecks after that, six paychecks, you have an emergency fund. Now we can start saving up for a down payment with no payments in the world. How much could you save up a year? $100,000? $100,000? Do you guys think we should... We, I'm only bringing home about 7000 a month. <laughs> and Because so of what? The income... It, it's just how much I actually bring home. I, I make uh, 142 a year, but I'm, I'm bringing home about 7000 a month. After Are you... Taxes, do you have uh, investment insurance. contributions coming out? Uh, yes, retirement and so forth. Um, we have a 403B, too. Okay. So... I would pause that until we get this mess cleaned up, because that's going to free up a big chunk of change for you, isn't it? If you pause that okay. contribution. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. So now we have maybe $8,000 coming in every month. Who knows? Or nine. Okay. Um, and just, you've heard this story before, and I just want to reiterate it, because it's that you hear the horror story, and it's not a horror story. This is reality. I bought a house out in the country that was completely redone from top to bottom, and it flew through the inspection. And in the four years since I bought it, I've had to replace the roof. I've had to replace an air conditioner. I've had to replace a hot water heater. And I've had to do some wiring issues because it's out in the country. And so if you put $15,000 down for 3% and one thing goes wrong, you're back in the hole another 10 grand, another 20 grand. Mm. And so George and I aren't trying to be mean or ruin 
dash your hopes. You know what we're really trying to do? Give Save your you some problems in the future. Well, we're you. just trying to give your baby the greatest gift a parent can give their kid, which is a home full of peace, not a home full of anxiousness. Because when you have mm-hmm. peace, then you can hold your kid accountable and you don't lose your mind because you're you have no margin. When you have peace, mm-hmm. you and your husband get in a spat which me and my wife do on a semi-daily basis. And (laughs) we both can respond rationally, not emotionally, because I'm also, I can't, I haven't slept for two weeks because I can't breathe about the roof payment and the air conditioner payment and the hot water heaters on the fritz. You see what I'm saying? We're trying to create peace in your home. That's the only way this country heals is house by house by house. And you make Mm -hmm. 200 grand. You have won the cosmic lottery. If you will just take 18 months and do this the right way, you will change your family tree forever. And that stress you have that is set your soul on fire, I got to get a house, I got to get a house, got to get a house, your kid will never feel that Mm. because they didn't grow up with that chaos. You see what I'm saying? Mm. All right, I got to get out of this debt. It's about, hey, hey, this is about freedom. And not like a, um, American flag under ruse. This isn't like an Instagram post. This is nobody owns your home but you. Do you think we should sell our current home, which still has about 100000 left in equity? You just told me to you're in a crime-riddled neighborhood. I would sell it and go rent for a while and take whatever equity and pay off the debt, get the emergency fund, and use that for the down payment fund. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Jay Z said, you "Brush so your shoulders off." I'd be out of that neighborhood. I'd go, but I'd rent a house until I can afford it. Yeah. Okay. Thank Ready. you so much. You got it. You're welcome, Tristan. Yeah. Again, I, I'm not beating up on Tristan. I just I'm looking at future Tristan 15 years from now, and I'm going, they can have a paid for house, a couple of them, and be baby steps millionaires, or they could be paying on a mortgage for the next 30 years while hanging on to debt and probably going further into other types of debt because they bought a home before they were ready. Which they got to get air conditioner margin. replaced. Oh, and the car f- transmission fell out. We got to get another car. And, and these aren't hypotheticals. That'll probably be the next call on the show, John. <laughs> exactly. Like, this isn't just, well, they're just being Eeyores. We're telling you we're here to help you guys when life happens, when you thought it was going to work out perfectly and it didn't. And we would not have jobs if everybody's plan always worked out. The fact that it rarely works out is why we're employed, right? Absolutely. So, Tristan, when you're ready to buy a home, here's, here's an easy formula to know when you're actually ready. When you can have a mortgage payment that's no more than a quarter of your take-home pay on a 15-year fixed-rate mortgage, which means it's probably going to be 30% higher than that 30-year payment. But you know what? If you do the 30-year payment before you're ready, you're going to stay broke a long time. And we found people that follow the baby steps, they end up paying off their mortgages in about seven years. And so this whole, like, well, I'll just do a 30 and I'll pay it off early, or you go 30 years and then refinance and get a HELOC on the second mortgage and you just keep the debt ball in the air for the rest of your life and you call us at 65 or 70 and say, I still have a mortgage, I got all this debt, I want to retire, what do I do? The best thing to do is get a time machine and make better decisions (laughs) in the past. And that's, we're here with past Tristan trying to help her make future decisions that, that will set her up to build wealth with less anxiousness. This is literally breaking free from broke. There, thank you for that book plug, John. I'm, so oh, I'm just saying, like, this is what this is. This is somebody making 200 grand who's going to wind up broke. This is how you break free from it. There's just no excuse, and we've seen the stats. People making six figures, one out of three, paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. With a six-figure income, there is no excuse in America today to be broke making that kind of money. We've got to break free. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. 
We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Dr. John Deloney. Well, hey, you know what time of year it is? It's the annual <laughs> listener survey. What time survey. is it, George? <laughs> uh, I knew it wasn't on anyone's bingo card for me to say annual listener survey for The Ramsey Show. So here it is, guys. We want to know your favorite parts of the show, what you like, what you don't like, what you want to hear more of, more about, whatever it is. We want to hear from you. And there are two ways to participate. You can text the word survey to 33789, or you can go to RamseySolutions.com slash survey. And if you're listening on podcasts or YouTube, we've got a link in the show notes to save you any extra typing. That's the last thing I want for you. So either way, make sure to go do that because comments are helpful and reviews and stuff. But the survey is really where our team digs into this data and we start to make actual changes for the next year based on that. So sign up today, and uh, you'll, here's a bonus. You'll be entered to win a $500 gift card for your time. It will take you a few minutes. Our research team, they, they like to ask questions, and we are not short for those, but it is worth your time, and it's so helpful to us. So appreciate you doing that Especially survey. Especially if you say that John is your favorite part of the show. You can do that, but that would also be a bold-faced lie. <laughs> so be truthful, but also be kind. If you're, like This is not the place just to like vent and leave a, you know— 88 page scathing review of John's performance on this show. That's what George's Twitter account is for. Save that. It's my private Twitter account. No one has access. So go take the Ramsey Show annual listener survey, text the word survey to 33789, or go to com slash survey. All right, let's get to the phones. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Victoria is up next in Phoenix. What's going on, Victoria? Hi, guys. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Um, we bought a car last year when the market was really bad for cars, um, with the purpose of, we plan on visiting all 50 states with our boys. And now it's like, okay, that the road trip plan sounds like fun, but we are upside down on our car. It's, we owe 42,000. And if I Kelly blue book it right now, it's only worth privately like 30 to 32,000. Mm, sorry to hear that. What's your household income? It's last year we ended the year with a hundred thousand, um, but we have to pay. T- last year we paid taxes about thirteen thousand. This year we're going to be making more. Uh, my my fiance is going to be making more than a hundred thousand, but we're guessing for taxes we're going to have to. We we have right now aside ten thousand, aside from our ten thousand savings, but we're guessing it's going to be somewhere around. 15, 16. Okay. Is he so self-employed or contract he, work? Yeah, he's self-employed. Um, okay. So we see our full check every week. Um, it varies between 2300 to 2900 But again, we have to put aside for taxes. Okay. What other debt do you have? Um, just the car in the, our house. Our house is at 135 Okay. We're uh. in a 15 year with our house. Why 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 are you calling about the car? Do you, are y'all trying to get rid of it? Are you just frustrated by it? I just don't know if like it's a, I'm just trying to see like is it a good idea that we have this car for this purpose 
Or no, I think it was a terrible purchase, but you've already made it. So why it's like if you if you bought a off. house and you're in it now, we're not always going to tell you go sell the house, go sell the house. And so that that's the case with this car. It's a lot of your world and a lot of your income, but it's not violating the principles outside of you going into debt for it. So it's kind of like if you bought a a, a share, you know, of a stock of a company, and you bought it at the yeah. at the at the height, and now the stock took a dip. Well, you didn't actually lose money until you sell that stock. And so the okay. same thing is true with this car. You can just ride this out, drive this thing to the wheels fall off, pay it off as fast as possible, and go, that was a stupid mistake. We're not going to do that again. Okay. That's what we were aiming towards. I just wanted to get, like, a professional opinion, like, okay, what should we do? I didn't. I had listened to other videos on YouTube, and some of the videos were like, hey, use that savings, um, you know, pay the difference of whatever. Yeah, you could do that. You do you guys have $10,000? Um, we have the ten thousand savings, but that's just like our like emergency fund. I really wouldn't want to, you know, be left with zero. And then if something happens, since my fiance is the only one that works, to be stuck in in a really tight spot. Well, what we teach here is the baby steps. And so baby step two is pay off all consumer debt using the debt snowball. Then baby step three is to get the emergency fund in place. So you're already out of order here. So if you wanted to take that $10,000 and get out of this car, you need a little bit more money than that to get a different car, of course. Um, but yeah. at this point, you may be better off just paying that thing off as fast as possible, making six figures. Yeah. How quickly could you pay off forty two k? Um, If we... I think if we stuck to it, I think we could do it in like in a year. That's what I'm talking Done. about. And you'll have what okay. I would call a knucklehead tax. And that is the gap between what you're upside down because you bought a car at the height of the market because you thought you would joyride yeah. America and it didn't work <laughs> out. So you have to be like, that was dumb. Like that cost us 12 grand in depreciation. But all right, we won't do that ever, ever, ever again. But that also means sacrifices. Like maybe we're not traveling the country this year because that's going to cost a lot of money. We may have to hang have, on to that dream. Okay. Could I add another question to this? Sure. Um, so he's been working at, um, so he's self-employed and he's a barber. And roughly every hour he makes like $60 an hour. And his um, manager he's been working with for about six years now, they want to open up another shop. And he wants to open up another shop and wants to have my fiance as half owner. Okay. Um. So obviously now he would keep a higher percentage and he'd be making more per hour. He'd keep all his all his cuts. Um, but should we pay off this car first or save up the fifty thousand first that we would need to put in to make this barbershop to get it going? You are broke. Okay. <laughs> You're not in a position to buy into a business right now. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, I, it sounds like an awesome deal. No, probably great. Sense. Your husband probably crushes if he's making sixty bucks an hour. That's that's George Camel haircut kind of hundred percent. I don't spend <laughs> that much. I'm, jeez, uh, that's amazing. But like, he must be really good at what he does. And I, I bet any yeah. in person who wants to open a shop wants to open a shop with a guy who's that good and who works that hard. And y'all are broke. Okay. Fair. So the car first. Nope. Fair enough. So here's the thing. You've got to make a, a decision now. Is this dream about starting this business more important than having a nice car? Because if that's the case, you could drive a beater, use your 10K, cover the difference on the loan, sell this thing, drive a beater car, then save up an emergency fund, then save up 50K on top of that to get this business going. That's a sacrifice, but we can't eat our, have our cake and eat it too. We're going to have to do things one at a time with focused intensity because trying to do everything at once is only going to slow you guys down in the long run. Yeah, that's what it feels like right now. But I want this. But hey, have him tell that guy, I can do this deal 18 months from now. I'm going to be in a really good spot to do this deal. But until then, I can't do it. Okay, I think that's enough time. The plaza that they want to open in, it's not even set to be running until fall of 2025. So right. I, it, here's, what, here's what George and I want you and your husband to do. I want you all to sit down and stop talking so much. And I want you to get out a pen or an Excel sheet. And I want you to put this plan to paper. Here's how much money we make. Honey, you're going to have to cut hair for a year on Sundays too. You're going to have okay. to work late. You have to do until 10 o'clock at night cuts. And honey, I'm going to actually get a part-time job also for just 12 months. And I know we had this dream that we were going to like, so I was always going to be with the kids, but for this particular season, we're going to work like maniacs to get out of this thing. But I want y'all okay. to look at real numbers on a real piece of paper, and y'all get a plan, and y'all swear by it, and then y'all go get married, and y'all do this thing together. Fair? 
Super fair. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, guys. All awesome. Right. Hey, Thanks, George. Victoria. This is one of those. This is one of the unforeseen things we talk about all the time. When we talk about choosing freedom, talk about having margin. It's rare. I'm not gonna lie. It's rare. But if you are really good at what you do and you work really hard, this crazy thing called opportunity shows up. Sometimes you plan for it. Sometimes it drops out of the moon. And imagine they hadn't have bought this car because let's go take the boys on every state. What if they just had a beater car and then the guy comes to them and says, hey, $50,000 buy-in. You're going to be a co-owner of this place. You're amazing at what you do. And we're about to make you really wealthy. And now they can't do it because of, mm. they, of past decisions because they chained themselves to a depreciating asset. Margin. Don't owe anybody money. Margin yeah. of freedom. Margin, freedom, and options, baby. That's what this plan's all about. You got to do what it takes, though. You this. never know when that call's coming. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm Ramsey personality George Campbell, joined by my good friend and colleague, Dr. John Deloney. Hey, if you're a new listener to the show and you want to dive deeper into the lingo, into the Ramsey baby steps that we talk about, you can go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button, and we'll help you figure out the next best step for your situation, for your financial journey based on where you're at today. That's RamseySolutions.com slash Get Started. Hey, big news. Uh, Mint. Is shutting down. Yes, I saw this news. This Mint, is wild. The uh, financial app, the one of the competitors to every dollar, if you will, is shutting down, which is four million people suddenly finding themselves without a budgeting app. And lucky for them, we have know, the greatest the budgeting thing. app on planet Earth, every dollar. Ready so for you. here's what that means. For all of you who feel financially homeless because you were using Mint and now it's shut down and you're like, what do I do? The good news is uh, there's an even better place you can go because truthfully, Mint wasn't a great financial app for budgeting. All it did is shows you what happened. Every dollar shows you how to plan for what's coming up, which is how you actually break free from broke and find margin. So if you want to start budgeting for free, you can download every dollar in your app store and go to everydollar.com and uh, get started. And we have a great onboarding process that makes it super easy. And in fact, John, I'm doing a webinar for every dollar next Friday. Uh, that is November the 10th around lunchtime, walking people through how to set up your first every dollar budget, how to use it to find margin. Because that's the exciting part. We don't budget just because we want to nerd out. We do it so that we can hit financial goals. And so that's a huge part of it. And we're going to show you exactly how to do that in this webinar next Friday. So you can go to everydollar.com slash budgeting to sign up for that free webinar. I encourage you. We get thousands and thousands of people sign up for those. And the feedback has been awesome. Because rarely do we get an hour to really walk through the visuals of here's what to do, answering your questions, and giving you some hope for your money. It's, it's, it's you, you coach people. And hey, I want to say this. The sign of a truly mature person a truly grown-up person is being able to say, I don't know how I need some help. I need some coaching help. I have had uh, mental health conversations with people in my family and myself where I've had to go, I had all those classes and I need to get some different perspective. If you're sitting there wondering, can I say the words out loud? I don't really know how to budget. Or I get the idea of budgeting is so stupid and so easy, and yet I never have been able to figure it out. Be a grown-up. Be an adult. Be somebody who is humble and says, for the sake of my family 
and the sake of my m- me, I'm going to put my pride down and I'm going to show up to one of these webinars and learn how to budget. You can log in as anonymous. Log in, let George be your coach and do this. And for those of you who are sick and tired of texting your spouse back and forth, did you spend $31 and 14 cents at whatever? I thought you were... get the every dollar app. And if you got friends who are on Mint who are like, oh my gosh, send it to them. Send this stuff to them. Those are your friends and they don't they may not even consume the show. They may not listen to anything. They may not know anything about every dollar. Send it to them. Three is it three months for free? Two oh, yeah. months for free? Yeah. You can start a free trial as well. Yeah, do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. This is one of those moments, man, when you can help millions of people just by hitting forward text, right? Easy. And here's the best news. Unlike Mint, we don't sell your data and shove credit cards and loans <laughs> down your throat, which is, by the way, their entire business model. How do you think Mint is making money? And so uh, I'm happy. I'm actually elated that Mint is shutting down for a lot of reasons. But one is that it wasn't actually helping people. Mm. Uh, it was just real slick fintech that, you know, people, everyone used it. And choo, now they're, they're, guess where they're pushing people, John? Credit karma. Aww. And you get what's coming to you when you sign up for credit karma to track your <laughs> stupid credit score. That's Goodness the name gracious. of the company, Credit Karma. Wish I was in that marketing meeting to tell them this maybe is not a great name, but hey, <laughs> I don't run things. I got a great uh, idea gosh. for my new restaurant. Yeah, so we it's are called Diarrhea. We welcome all of you uh, soon to be financially homeless folks from Mint over to the warmth of every dollar. We got stew, you know, on the stove. We got cookies baking in the oven. We're ready for you, John. Some of with the open arms. Mama Camel's baklava. Hey, don't tease me with a good time. That's a, uh, okay. I, you made that weird. Kelly Daniel knows she's had my mom's baklava. It's world class. So. All right, let's go out to Lane in Dallas. <laughs> Lane is in Dallas, Texas. If he's still, I'm sorry, Lane. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you all today? Good. Are, are you still? Well? Are you still glowing about your Rangers? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to the parade. I'm I'm working, trying to get that extra overtime in. Hey. Good for you. As an Astros fan, I don't think you need to go, but that's 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 another conversation. <laughs> so what's up? So uh, me and my wife, uh, we've been currently uh, trying to work on building our budget, trying to get out of all of our debt. And then we kind of had this conversation last night when we were looking at the Excel file. And she, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to plan out like to an extent roughly like every paycheck like this is what we need to meet this goal and she has real bad anxiety and like she just doesn't want to deal with any of that but she wants me just to be like hey here's this amount this is what we can spend on this and just let her go with that i have i'm sure it exists out there and people feel free to put it in the comments I have never heard a successful marriage conversation about money that begins with one person saying, hey, honey, want to see the Excel spreadsheet? Ba-ding! And have the other person be like, oh, sweet, this is going to be awesome. I've never seen that. No, we were uh, just sitting about talking about, like, our finances because today was payday for us. So we were talking about, like, like, and then... Uh, we were talking about like what needs to go where, and then we pulled out the spreadsheet because we've been trying to go through all those baby step goals, and we just now recently got the thousand dollars in savings. So we were trying awesome. to look at the debt and so how much debt do you have? Working towards that, so we have about eighty-two thousand, I think, roughly. Okay, what kind of debt is it? So I have forty-two thousand in student loans. That's all me. I have seventeen thousand on my car. We have a seven thousand dollar personal loan, uh, about three thousand in medical for our son that was just born in March, May. Okay. And about and about fourteen in credit cards. Oh, how much do you make, man? Uh, together we bring home about bring home is seven thousand a month. Okay. Well, step one, we need to increase our income and also decrease mm-hmm. expenses. And the compound effect of that will give you margin to throw extra on top of your debt. So here's what I want you to do. Let's skip the spreadsheet. I'm going to gift you three months of every dollar premium, and she can log in on her phone, and you both have this app, and this is this is our sheet mm-hmm. music that we're playing from. 
And what you're going to do is list out your income for the month, followed by all of your expenses, list out all of your debts Mm -hmm. separately as minimum payments. And Mm -hmm. that's going to show you how much money you either have left over to throw at the debt or you might be in the red and you might need to find some income Mm -hmm. or cut some expenses. But the good news is every Mm -hmm. dollar is just a mirror. It's not the boogeyman. It's just reality, Mm -hmm. which can feel like the boogeyman. But once she faces that and now you go, all right, here's the gap. If we could find $400 a month, we could pay off our debt this much faster, which gets us to this goal even faster. That will start to get her excited. Mm -hmm. Versus a spreadsheet. we got to start painting a picture of what the future is going to look like. And the budget just becomes our daily GPS to get there. Anybody who's sitting with somebody who um, they start to do a budget and they just get super anxious, that's me. We had money challenges growing up. And so my body put a little GPS pin in conversations about money because they were always stressful. They were always loud. They were always scary. And then as an adult, when my wife and I found ourselves up to our eyeballs in debt, my body started sounding that alarm. It's been, to, it's been to that place before, and here we go again. So if your wife is feeling anxious, instead of mm-hmm. trying to solve that with a spreadsheet, I would close the computer and hold both of her mm-hmm. hands and say, hey, your body's trying to get your attention about something, telling you that you're not safe. What are you scared about? And maybe she's going to say, hey, when I was a kid, money was really scary around the house, and it just remembers. Or maybe she's looking at all this debt and how much money you do or don't have in this little baby that's brand new and just saying, I don't know how all this works. And that's where the baby step plan, getting a plan often helps with that anxiety. Hang on the line, Lane. We're going to send you three months of Every Dollar Premium. Two features specifically, I want you to check out paycheck planning so that you know exactly when and if you're going to run out of money. And then financial roadmap, where you guys get to start to dream together and see what the future looks like if you follow this plan with Gazelle Intensity. This is The Ramsey Show. Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help you build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Campbell, joined by Dr. John Deloney. This is your show, America. Give us a call at 888-825-5225. It's been an amazing uh, launch week as we've celebrated the launch of my new book, Breaking Free from Broke. It's now available for pre-order for just 20 bucks, and we're going to bribe you with $100 worth of bonuses to make it worth your while, including an enhanced audiobook read by me, the ebook, access to my newest talk from our Smart Conference event, and so much more. So please go Signed check it out. Signed t-shirts that you've already worn, I heard? That's, we're not doing that one yet, John. We'll work our way up to the merch. One the, person, the one merch. lucky person is going to get... Um, you're going to tattoo their name on your arm? I think that's more your audience. Is what That's what they're looking I for. Just, I think this is the perfect moment for a crossover. I don't think my target demo is tattooed guys. You know, that's cool if they are. I don't know if they're out I there. Think, I think the fintech community is... I think mine's more like former Apple Store employees. That's about my speed. <laughs> that are like, ah, the sun. Yeah, ah, that's it. the sun. But uh, I'm really am pumped about this book. It's I've been working on it for a year straight, and the whole point of it is to help people have more money and less stress. And I do that by first exposing this toxic money system, the way we've all stumbled into it. Some of it was our fault. Some of it was well-meaning guidance counselors and teachers and parents and who knows what else, a TikTok video that you took some advice from. And so I just want to just crush through all that noise and tell you the truth about money and hit every objection in your mind and then show you a path to break free from that and have more time and money than ever before. So that's it. If you want to check that out, if that sounds interesting to you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash store and pre-order today. John is up next in Fort Collins, Colorado. John, welcome to the show. Uh, yes. Um, I just am looking for some input on possibly changing jobs. Um, I have about $20,000 in debt. Um, I like where I work. Um, we're on big step two. Um, but, and we're making things work as is, but it's tight financially. I have an opportunity to make a jump to where I could get a sign on bonus, 
um, of like five thousand um, dollars. And then on top of that, I'm be making about um, five uh, five to six dollars more an hour, um, plus more overtime. But I would be gone more. My wife stays at home. She homeschools and takes care of the kids. So this would be a um, stress on her being at home with the kids more. Um, my my guess, it, what I would want to do is when I leave this job, cash out my 401k and pay off all the debt, and that would give us breathing room. No. On the other side of that would No. Be, Don't do no. any of those things you're talking about. Severing your okay. leg off <laughs> m- yeah. may make okay. you way less, but it's not the solution to the problem. Okay. How much How much do you make in your job right now? Um, anywhere from uh, 5500 um to 6500 a month. That's okay. what I take home. And you owe 20000 bucks. then y'all are free and clear? Yeah, twenty thousand is what we owe. And what's this new job gonna gonna net you? What are you gonna bring home every week from it? Um, anywhere from like sixty five to seventy five a month. So it's it's basically gonna be a thousand dollars extra a month. Yes. I will tell you, I would much rather see you keep the job that you love, that allows you to be with your family, that gives you peace, and on on a daily basis, day in and day out. And you and your wife sit down and say, for the next six months, I'm going to get up at five o'clock in the morning and drive people to the airport via Uber or Lyft. And I'm going to drive in the evenings when I get off and I'm going to earn that extra 12 grand on my own and knock this stupid stuff out. Okay. Because you're making a long-term shift decision. You're changing in the entire dynamic of your family for 12,000 bucks. If you told me it's 20 grand, I would say y- y'all need to sit down and have that conversation. But just a thousand bucks a month feels like a million dollars to you right now because you can't breathe. But I think there's some things y'all can do right now that doesn't upend your family so much. Okay. Does that sound right? Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, and, and that's probably the advice I need. Or are you just exhausted, um, dude, and just ready for this to be done? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I am exhausted, but at the same time, this is a job that I do like. Um, it's close to home, but the job that I would be going to is a job that I did before, um, and it, did, it caused a lot of stress on my family. So, yeah. Um, but it, it's like the financial stress of trying to get out of debt. If right you told now. me you were 50 or 100 grand in debt, and you're going to double your salary. That may be different. Right. I'm, I'm all, dude, I'm all about, like, I just got through with it. George and I were just talking off air, writing a book in our jobs and doing our own shows, plus TRS, plus being on the road, traveling, doing speaking gigs, plus doing internal video shoots for the business units and rims. Like when you put a book on top of that, one group of people suffers the most. And that's our families because that stuff is right. done in the mornings before everybody wakes up and it's done at nighttime. And it just erodes things. And when you're on the road, you're writing in hotels, so you get home exhausted. It, it's just chaos. And then you have to go on the road and sell it. And But here's the deal. It's a season. And it comes with a reward at the back end. Hey, it's going to be a bananas year. And then we're going to get, hopefully if it sells well, we'll get a little bit of a income windfall. And then we don't do it again for a couple of years. And so, you see what I'm saying? So if you're doing something for a season... I'm, dude, I'm all in. Work like a maniac. Do, just, go, just go guns a-blazing. It's when you say, I'm just going to do this indefinitely, and I already have done this job before. I know it's going to stress me out. It's going to stress the family out. For 12 grand, man, you can earn 12 grand doing other things um, before or after the job you have now. Fair? I would agree. What's your job? Uh, heavy equipment mechanic. I work for the fire department right now. Oh, cool. So you're you're a handy guy. Yeah, I, I I guess. Do you know how much you can make just doing handyman work in your neighborhood and posting on Facebook? And I'm not talking like complicated stuff. We're talking changing light bulbs, framing up some photos, that kind of stuff. How much do you think I, you can make an hour? I have never looked into it. I'm gonna tell I you right know. now because I pay these people, and it hurts my brain that I paid them this much. Fifty to ninety dollars an hour is what people charge for handyman work in my neighborhood. You mean to blow your mind even more? <laughs> My friend Gustavo Menendez came to the United States. He married a missionary, and he was an engineer, but the U.S. wouldn't recognize his engineering degree because it was from another country, so he had to make money, and he had a truck and a couple hundred bucks. And he 
now has an unfathomably successful mobile oil change business where he comes to your office, he comes to your house and changes the oil in your car in your driveway. You know what I would pay for someone to come to my house out in the woods and do that? Because it costs me a whole half day of my life to do that. I got to drive an hour to the place. I got to wait. And it says 10 minutes and it ends up being an hour and a half. And I got to drive an hour back. It's, It's unbelievable. And you, with your mechanic skills, could fill up Saturdays and Sundays and night times and mornings with oil changes in people's driveways. And you would have your debt paid off in no time. It's about seasonality. And then I want you to start to ask yourself, what am I going to do in five years, in 10 years? Are you going to own your own mechanic shop? Is there a path forward? I think that's the question you need to be asking. Do I love this work and what comes after this? But man, I wouldn't quit your job right now, not for 12 grand. I'd find that money. Scratch and claw. Get it. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. show i told you uh, what time of year it was it's the annual listener survey time of year but it's also christmas cash giveaway time that's here too you could win one of our 500 hundred dollar weekly prizes or the grand prize of five thousand dollars that's just our way of uh you know giving away dave's money it's the most fun you can have with money is giving away your money followed by dave's money so enter every day to increase your chances of winning at ramseysolutions.com slash giveaway you can also get some meaningful gifts for christmas during our 12 dollars sale uh we've got best-selling books on there for 12 bucks like the total money makeover baby steps millionaires and and own your past, change your future for just $12 each. And, John, this is exciting. Questions for Humans Conversations cards are as low as 10 bucks right now. Plus, the popular Questions for Humans Christmas edition is back. Those sold out last year, so get them while you can. Hey, and we got a new one. Uh, we got two new ones this year. Thanksgiving. We're going to save your Thanksgiving. If you are already dreading Thanksgiving, just sitting around the table staring at that one family member who will not shut up about politics and has an opinion on every there's mm. every family has that one person that's still talking about covid just can't it's let it go done. let's stop i got you questions for humans thanksgiving and then we have a new one and this was people were just asking and asking and asking for it so we sat down with ex- experts Kids and grandparents. Oh. And we have a grandparents and kids deck. That's So fun. if you take your kids to uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, you can go on a date and your their grandparents aren't just going to hand them digital babysitters. They can actually sit and talk and communicate That's and learn so all great. about your parents. I'll be home for Thanksgiving, so I'm going to give it to my parents and say, can you ask my two-month-old these questions? <laughs> exactly. Well, See if we can out. get her talking. It'll be perfect. I want answers. Perfect. Right, hey, we hold gonna on, hold one? on. We're gonna, I'm going to do a question with you. Okay. Um, what are one or two things you'd like to be thankful for next year? That I'd like to be. This is aspirational gratefulness. Aspirational uh, gratitude. So That's right. Uh, I think uh, my health. Things taken for granted. Hmm. 
and with some recent family stuff, I'm yep. like, wow, like this is all we have. And it goes quick. We got one body. Yep. One health. So, you know, I want to make the most of that. I want to be more grateful for it and uh, with action steps. With Excellent. That, like moving my body, like John says to do. Here's another one. When did you last write a handwritten letter? Who was it to and what was it for? I'm going to say my wife's birthday. When was that? Last year. <laughs> Gosh, wow. I'm the worst. Well, probably to a team member here. I do some thank you cards to the team. That doesn't count. How about you? You do it every day, I'm I sure. I do a lot. Uh, so listen, here's I think would be really cool. What if you, she, she doesn't listen to the show, let's be honest. No. What if you wrote Whitney a handwritten letter just telling her what an amazing job she's doing as a brand new mom? Oh, that would get tears flowing in the best way. I mean, you don't want to just make your wife cry. There's other ways you do that too. I've seen it. But I think just like saying, yeah. hey, I, I just want you to know, I see how amazing you Cause are. Because I say it a lot, but there's something about having it written on paper that hits different. She can go back to it and go back to it and go back to it and go back to it. Yeah. That's good. All right. Last one. What's the most binge-worthy TV show right now? Oh, man. I'm going to do one that's not going to embarrass me. How about that? Fair. Um, it's Gilmore Girls. You love Gilmore well, Girls. Well, I did just watch the Beckham documentary, which for those of you who think I don't know about sports, I still don't, but I also watched the Beckham documentary. I know. There's a soccer player next to one of your favorite pop stars of all time. Exactly. Victoria. I was watching for Pop Spice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say The Bear on Hulu. Ah, I keep hearing about this. A great show. Can I tell you what I stumbled into What's that I'm that? exactly 10 years late on? Homeland. Oh, oh that feels my. very Deloney. You think that you're a, show, an extra on Homeland. I, I I dream of one day just getting a knock on my door in the woods, and the CIA's like, we need you. And I'm like, I'm in. Gosh. That what won't a, come. What a weird dream. The, the, YouTube, the YouTubers That's came. And like, hey, Look Deloney. at us connecting, John, Aww. thanks to these cards. We're friends, I didn't, I didn't We're even, friends now. I wasn't even tempted to pull up my phone and ignore this conversation because they were so good. <laughs> so <laughs> Questions for humans. Go get Solutions.com. Save your holidays. Yep. So, reminder, the giveaway is happening at RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway, and then check out the $12 sale at RamseySolutions.com slash store. And while you're there, you'll see my book there. It's not 12 bucks because it's brand new. Eventually, we'll make it to the $12 sale, but it's worth adding to cart, and maybe you'll hit free shipping if you get to, you know, 50 bucks. So, Ayo. there you go. All right, let's get to Valerie in Atlanta, Georgia. Valerie, what's going on? Hi, thank you both so much for taking my call. I greatly appreciate being here. Sure. Um, sometimes I try to use humor to get through things. So if I say something and y'all are laughing at it, but I'm serious at the same time, I am new. I'm kind of Ramsey-ish, trying to be much more involved. Um, I was on the um, Ken Coleman show not once but twice Um he didn't tell me I was a hot mess, but I've heard Dave Ramsey say basically some of the things that I'm experiencing, I'm a hot mess. I have the mind of a gazelle, but I'm waddling around like a penguin. I can't get, I can't get anywhere. I'm That's self-aware at least, I have, Valerie. I appreciate that honesty. So how can we help? If Ken Coleman couldn't help you, who can? What's going on? I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. So you're 58 and you sound like you're scared to death. And and he's thinking, yeah, John, you can you can help me. And that's why he hooked me up with you. He said I really probably needed needed to talk to you. Um, I wanted to come to the book signing. We don't have any money, so basically, okay. I'm married to somebody. Much I'm trying to talk fast, and if I talk too fast, let me know. But I'm trying to get it all in because it's a big mess. Okay, a huge, huge big mess. Go for it. I uh, had an accident four years ago. Um, Ken tried to get, you know, Ken coached me along a little bit about trying to get a better paying job. I was making six figures. I'm not even making but $16 working a big box retail now, and it's extremely stressful. Mm -hmm. And the hours are from 11 to 8, so I can't really get a serving job, you know, at night or do other things. But anyway, long story short, I've been doing a lot of trying to get a new job. I've uh, been in counseling twice a week because I'm – I had to learn to walk again. I had to learn to get out of bed by myself. My husband was by my side. Um, this happened in another country in the Netherlands. But when I came home, I couldn't do anything. And he was still stuck in the Netherlands. I was back here in the state and couldn't do anything um, by myself. I had to go to therapy and everything. This happened about four years ago. So I'm a financial wreck, 58, no savings, don't even have, I can't even pay my bills. My my money doesn't even cover my bills, but I'm so anxious. And sometimes, honestly, I do still 
life ins- term life insurance policy because Dave says have term rather than whole. I do have that, and I feel like I'm more more dead than alive. I mean, I can't mm-hmm. I can't get out of this mess. I I just don't know. Where's husband? Uh, husband is 75. Can't okay. work um, here in the states legally, and he's retired. So he is somewhat on the same page with you know he does help a little bit every month very little because he's still got a place it's a long story but i mean he does not even have a green card in our country because that's five thousand dollars we don't have okay. um so you're the you know, you're sole income for the house making 16 an hour how much debt do you guys have We have, as as a couple, I mean, it's me. Uh, this is all prior to us being married, 47000 Um, Go over that. That's why I'm in such a horrific, horrific shape. And Ken told me to talk to you guys because not only am I anxious every day and nervous and just a financial wreck, um, 20 of that is two parent plus loans. Um, I'm 14, five upside down in my truck, have tried to work out a settlement, don't know. I mean, like, I can't even buy a hoopty. There's no way to even go out and buy one of those to get, you know, to do the side hustles. I'm not an excuse maker. No, you're stuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm stuck. A couple of things. You're stuck. And you ain't going to hear that from George and I, that we're going to clown on you. You're in an absolute mess. And I want you to make complete and total peace with your body. If the anxiety alarms weren't ringing off the hook inside your body, I would tell you you need to go to a physician immediately. Your anxiety right now means your body is working about perfectly. It's perfect. Okay? So hang on the line. We're going to roll this call over. We're going to go to break. And then we come back. We're going to walk you through some potential challenges and some potential opportunities. This is a mess, and this is very, very hard. Okay? Stay with us. We'll be right back right here on The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. We were on the line with our friend Valerie in Atlanta. Let me recap her situation for you. She's 58. Her husband's 75. He can't work in this country, and they can't afford the green card. They're $47,000 in debt between uh, parent plus loans and being upside down on a truck, and she's making $16 an hour working retail and feels stuck along with a uh, an accident that has left her kind of picking up the pieces. So, Valerie, are you still with us here? Yes, sir, I am. Did I sum it up accurately? Pretty much, yes, sir. Okay. Right. Yes. So, hey, I want to jump in here, and I know that you have been repeatedly 
hit upside the head over the last four or five or six years, right? Yes. And when that happens to us, often we develop some pretty amazing um, defense mechanisms. And so I want you to do me a favor and I want you to tighten your hands really tight right now. Can you do that? Can you squeeze both your hands as tight as you can? And then I want you to relax them and open them up completely. Okay. Drop your shoulders. I'm going to rattle a bunch of stuff off for the sake of time. And then I'm going to hook you up with a couple things at the end of this. Okay. But I want you to think through some of these things. All right. Thing number one, I want you to write a letter to your former self that used to make six figures. That woman is haunting you right now because you used to be incredible, right? Yes. Yeah. And I think you still are. You're hanging in there. You're a boxer that's on the rope, but you're ropes, but you're still hanging in there. And all you can remember is when you used to be champ. And you can't see that actually the fighting that's going on right now, you're actually stronger and tougher than you used to be. Okay? I want you to write her a letter and say you miss her, and but she's gone now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to deal in the reality that we have here. We're going to shift that identity to who we used to be to who we are. And we are scrappy and tough now. Number two... I want you to have a hard conversation with your kids and let them know. I signed these Parent PLUS loans. I can't pay my bills to eat. And I want you to tell them this is embarrassing. This is hard. This is scary. Whatever words you want to use. But that you need them to help with the cost of their college education, at least for the foreseeable future. And they might tell you, forget you, mom. We're not doing that. Whatever. You're right. I signed my name on it. And if you want to watch your mom drown, then you can watch that. But I need some help. The third thing is, I drove by this morning. My daughter and I went to breakfast, and I drove by a McDonald's, and on the sign, it said 20 bucks an hour. I want you to take all of the imaginary pride you have, and I want you to... St- you are locked into a, 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 a 8 o'clock to 11 p.m. job or whatever time you work right now. I want you to be very honest about your local area. And it might be working at fast food. It might be working two fast food jobs. McDonald's in the morning, Taco Bell's in the evening, or Arby's in the morning and whatever. I don't care because right now we got to get that income up. Okay. It's yeah. going to be a swallowing of pride that you – it's going to be I, – I, I just hurt for you. And you're going to come out on the back end of this so strong. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to call the Social Security office and see what the status is. Have you already done that? What do you mean? If you have a disability that prohibits you from doing the work that you used to be able to do, you may be eligible for Social Security early. Uh, Well, I I, I can actually – I I was going to tell you. Four years later, I am walking now. I'm okay. getting out of bed by myself, and I'm fine. Mentally, I'm a mess. Okay. But physically, I can. I'm being real. I can actually work now. I've been applying. That's why Ken said get some help with your mental state. And, you know, and ask John for some advice on being so anxious. And why do you, you think know, you're? Hold on. Why do you think you're a mess? Um. I'm a mess because, well, I feel like I'm a failure. I, I okay. mean, you're asking me the total picture. Feel like I'm a failure. Okay, not true. Going to count- Hold on, not true. Go, go to the next thing. Okay. What's the next thing? Um, I feel like I'm not good enough. Okay, not true. Go to the next thing. My kids, uh, I, I feel like I'm a failure to my my grown kids. My okay. kids are grown. That's false. Like that's 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 not true. So what you've just told me is a lot of feelings. And you're being run by your feelings, not by data. And so it's an old cognitive behavioral technique that any counselor should have had you do, which is to write down these feelings that are burying you. And then I want you to demand evidence from them. Is that true? I feel like a failure to my grown kids. Is that true? Did I raise them? How they see me not. Hey, they're grownups. They can see you however you want. They may not be true either. Right? 
I want you to take these thoughts and I want you to write them down, all these feelings, and challenge them. Take them head on. And if you can't see the forest from the trees, call your kid. Hey, I've been really wrestling with this idea that I'm a failure. Is that true? No, mom, we freaking love you. We miss you. And I want you to take those on. I don't think your body's screwed up. I don't think you're a mess. If I had a 75-year-old person, spouse, if my wife was 75 and I loved her and she couldn't work and she was drowning in her own shame and she was getting older and I was terrified and I had this wreck and I used to be a six-figure earner and now I'm making 16 bucks an hour, I'd be anxious too. Every person on the planet would be anxious. That's why I don't know that the anxiety is the thing to go solve right now. I think the thing to solve is fighting going to war against these negative bullcrap feelings because they're not true. You're not a failure. You're still standing. You're absolutely incredible. You have fought back from not being able to get out of bed and now you're working. Now I want you to see that worth more than 16 bucks an hour because you're worth more than that. I want you to hang on the line because this isn't just a one and done thing, okay? We're going to do a couple things. Number one, I'm going to hook you up with three, nope, six. I'm going to hook you up with six months of free counseling with my friends at BetterHelp. You can do that from home, so you don't have to drive anywhere, okay? It's it's online. The second thing is we're going to hook you up with three sessions with a financial coach, with Ramsey Financial Coaches, for free, okay? They're going to walk through your budget specifically, and they're going to help pull you apart and show you that it is that bad, and here's some ideas, or it's actually not that bad. Or actually, maybe it's in the middle. You're going to get some data, some facts, okay? The third thing is I'm going to send you three months free of every dollar, the app that you can track your money, and you can begin to get some little wins, little bits of control over this thing, slowly and surely. Anxiety comes when we project the future is going to be a certain way, and it scares us, and we start trying to solve it in the present, and it's an imaginary future. You have to head into that anxiety. I'm terrified about what comes next. Cool. I'm going to go figure out what comes next. I'm terrified I'm not going to have enough money. Cool. I'm going to go get a second job and a third job because now I can get up. I'm terrified about uh, about my feelings. Cool. I'm going to see a counselor and I'm going to use CBT techniques. I'm going straight after these feelings that aren't true. We're going right into the storm and we're going to hook you up with people to walk with you. Thank you for being brave. Thank you for the call. Mm -hmm. You are awesome. 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 Good stuff, John. Thank you for that. One last thing, Valerie. The first thing you buy is food. The next thing you need to buy is shelter. The next thing is utilities. We're paying for light, paying for the water bill. And the next thing is clothing, basic necessities. That's it. That means the car loan folks, they can kick rocks and pound sand because you don't have the money to pay. The student loan companies, they can also kick rocks and pound sand because you don't have the money to pay. You come first. The creditors, they can wait. And I love John's advice about getting the kids to pitch in. Even though it's legally on you, I think the kids need to step up and help mom in our time of need. And we can get you outside of this upside down truck situation. You need to go over there and say, listen, you got a bad loan on your hands. I need the difference to get out of this mess. And you're going to have to fight that to get out of that mess and get you something you can drive to work. But we are rooting for you. America is rooting for you. And John hooked you up with so many resources that I hope helps you take the right next step. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. Today's question of the day is sponsored by Neighborly, your hub for home services. When you want to repair, maintain, or improve your home, stop wasting time scrolling through pages and pages of providers and Googling around. Neighborly is all you need to remember for a nationwide network of local home service professionals. Visit neighborly.com slash Ramsey to find reliable help near you. All right, today's question comes from Monica in New Hampshire. 
She writes, I have a question about the debt snowball. I feel like I've been doing it all wrong. My two debts are my car loan and student loans. My car loan is $8,500. Um, my student loans total a whopping $120,000, but this is split over 16 different loans. 12 of the loans are lower than the car loan. My loans are in deferment since I'm in school, but interest has started. Should I stick with tackling the car loan or turn my gazelle intensity to the smaller student loans? Thank you for your help. Ooh, this is like a common core math riddle. <laughs> Jane has 16 Except loans. there will be an actual answer to this one. Yes, we can actually solve this this puzzle here. Okay, so loans are in deferment. You're in school. Interest has started. Should I stick with tackling the car loan? I assume she's working while in school, which I like, that there's income coming in at the same time. Uh, or turn the gazelle intensity to the smaller student loans. I'm gonna. This is what I did personally, so I'll tell you what I did. I had you know, 12, 13 different little loans, and it was so much more freeing to see them as little ankle biters and list them out from smallest to largest than it was to see $120,000 in student loans. Yes. So Baby steps. I would do it. You can do it in a spreadsheet, but what's really helpful now, I didn't have every dollar back then, but with every dollar, when you list out your budget, you can list all of your debts, smallest to largest. It does it for you. And you'll list out your minimum payments, your loan balances, and that will show you what to tackle next and how much margin you have in your budget to throw at that smallest debt. So absolutely, let's tackle the smallest one first. Let's knock out that little one. You have 11 more student loans to go. Then the car loan will sit in the mix. Then you'll have those last four student loans. And you're going to free up so many payments along the way that you get this thing called hope and momentum and motivation. And that's what keeps you going. And it's why I love the debt snowball. Yeah, there's something powerful. You can spend nine months knocking that car loan down to $3,000, or you can spend nine months and you have 16 loans, and now you only have six. And there's just something psychological about that. We, we say that all the time. It's 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 80% behavior, 20% math, right? And so the, the psychology, the behavior part, these tiny little wins over and over and over again. So I love that advice, That's George. Good. Well, and 12 student loans are lower than that $8,500 yeah, car loan. So that out, tells me you're going to knock these out so fast, and you're actually going to get there faster. And the math, people like to argue about the debt avalanche and paying the highest interest first. Nah, stupid. The math is negligible. Uh, but psychology, what isn't dude. is the psychology that will get you to the actual finish line. Yeah. And so love it. Way to go. Call us up when you're debt-free, Monica. We'll celebrate with you. All right, Logan is in Atlanta up next. Logan, what's going on? Hello? You with us? Yes, sir. What's going on? Hey, uh, so I have a question. Uh, I'm 20 years old, and I do travel construction work, and my company has a 401k type plan, not exactly a 401k. Uh, I'm not sure what they called it, but they decided to cancel it and actually handed me everything that I contributed this morning. And I was wondering uh, what I should do with that money. I'm on step two. I recently just started the plan. A friend recommended it to me. Um, I, I, I got the thousand dollars last week and now I'm, uh, I'm yeah. So I'm looking to see what to do with that money. Awesome. How much is it? Uh, so it's a, it was a 20, every $20 you put in, they only put in 10. So uh, until I got my debts paid, I was only putting in about 40 bucks a week. So it's uh, only $800. Okay. And what's your debt hold, total? Hold on. Did, did they keep their match? Did they just keep their money? So it was a, it's like this deal where until 15 years, you're not 100% invested. And I was only until 15? So 15 years? Yeah. And you're still with this company? Yeah. You work for the mob? Well, uh, well, I'm only about a year into this company. I'm, uh, I'm 20 years old. Yeah, dude, you're young enough that you don't realize that they are taking so much advantage of you. You're working for unethical people. I've never heard of it taking 15 years to vest. Yeah, it, the percentage it goes up every every year, or something like that. But so they held they your money. It. They held your money for a year. They made interest yeah. on your money. They matched your money. And then they're like, eh, we're not doing this anymore. Here's your money back. We'll keep the interest we earned off your 800 bucks, and we're going to keep the money that we we're going to match 15 years from now. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's called sketchy. So I was wondering what to do with that, and um, I'm going to get into a Roth when I get my debts paid off. Um, but so, yeah, I was just wondering what to do with that money. Should I save it? Put throw it, it at the debt. debt. You're in baby step two. You already have the thousand dollars. So any money above that, let's start throwing at the debt. So what's your next smallest okay. debt? 
Okay, so yeah, I have a I have a car loan, and then I have two. I have an ATV loan, and I have a, a personal loan for a truck that I owned previously. I fixed so I could sell it because it was giving me a lot of problems, and it was just costing me money to own. You have an addiction to wheels and motors, don't you, my man? <laughs> Well, yeah. Okay. The Sell ATV, your ATV, I, dude. I was under the impression that it was going to build up my credit, so I purchased that when I was eighteen, and I found out that that was not the case. So, <laughs> yeah, what? Dude. Ah, oh dude, boy, your ATV is sold this weekend. Okay, it's gone. Logan, I'm so glad you're 20 because you have so much time to never make dumb mistakes again, and that gives me great joy. That you're only like yes, two years into adulthood, and you can undo a lot of this and still have the next 40 years to build wealth and not remain broke. Yes, sir. So what is the next smallest debt on the list? So it's I have a $1,700 debt um, from a truck repair. That one's the first. And then the ATV is second, and I owe about seven on it. And What's it worth? What could car. you sell it for? I think it's probably only worth about four. So I was planning on trying to pay it, get the difference, and then try to sell it as fast as I can. Okay. And the personal loan? Uh, well, the personal loan was for the truck fix. That's the smallest one oh, at it. $1,700. And then the car and loan? And then I have a car loan at 17000 What's this car worth? Um, Probably about twelve to thirteen. Goodness. And what do you make? Uh, I make about $50,000 a year. Okay. So we're underwater in pretty much everything in our life, and I want to get you above water, and that means sacrifices, no more toys. It means working double. Can you work overtime? Can you pick up three more jobs? Uh, well, I work out of town, so that's, that's not actually possible for me. Can you go get a different job doing the same thing locally? Um, I'm not sure. I, I get pretty decent hours working out of town, and... Um, a family member is is in this business, and he's very high up, and he's kind of guiding me to get to where he is. Um, so that's kind of the main reason I'm working for the company. Logan, your company sucks. I don't like this plan. And if I was doing a consulting gig and I was sitting with your president of your company behind closed doors, I would tell him the same thing. He's taking advantage of 20-year-olds. Yes, sir. Could you make $25 an hour locally doing construction? I'm not sure. It's not really something I've looked into. I make about 22 right now. I just got a raise. So listen, homie, this morning, I just mentioned this on another call. This morning, I was taking my daughter to breakfast, and I drove past a sign at a McDonald's that was starting at $20 an hour. And this is in rural Tennessee. And if you worked at McDonald's in rural Tennessee... You'd make almost the same money, except you'd get to sleep in your own bed, and you wouldn't have to travel, and you could have friends and community, and possibly work a small weekend job to make a little bit more money. And probably have better benefits than what you have now. I promise you would have better benefits. You have this picture, yes, dude. I'm just, I'm just telling you. If you were my brother or my son or a close friend of mine, I would tell you, I don't work for people I don't trust, period. I just don't, man. Life's too short. And if they're going to do this to you, they're going to take advantage of you and then pat you on the back and then say, look how great we are. Dude, I, I'm, I'm out. I'm out, man. I'm going to start doing some homework, Logan, to see what jobs are available in my area. Talk to people who are doing those jobs. How much do they make? Do they enjoy it? And I'm going to try to work locally so that you can bust your butt, work overtime, and not be on the road and stuck in this cycle, man. Get a girlfriend. Hang out. Enjoy your life. Smile. Chips and salsa, dude. That's what it's all about. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back before you know it.
from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm Ramsey personality George Campbell, joined by my good friend, Dr. John Deloney, and we're taking your calls at 888-825-5225. It's been a fun week for me, John, as we've been uh, pre-launching my new book, Breaking Free from Broke. After 34 years on Earth, 10 years at Ramsey, and one year of writing, it just feels good to be done with something, you know? <laughs> Woo! Well, you did, you, you did have a child. That was kind of cool. That's true. I actually sent the final book in while I was in the, the delivery room. When he was like, hey, over here, man. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, hang one on, second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. One second. Luckily, we made it just in time. But I'm pumped for this book. It's called Breaking Free from Broke, The Ultimate Guide to More Money and Less Stress. And uh, I, of course, I start with my story of how I went from broke to millionaire in a decade following this proven Ramsey plan. No TikTok hacks, no shortcuts, just good old-fashioned debt snowball, emergency funds, investing in the 401k, getting a house the right way, the Ramsey way, paying it off early in our early 30s, and then showing people that it's possible for them too. That it's, sounds so boring. I know, but it's so peaceful. It sounds so like you're you should have passive income and more leverage, George. You're leaving money on the table. I have zero leverage. Have you seen me? I'm so short. I don't think I could leverage anything, John. That is true. The other side of the teeter-totter would launch you into the into orbit. I know how fulcrums work. I remember <laughs> fourth grade when we studied that. Uh, but I really had one goal with this book, John, and it was to write a book about money that didn't feel like a root canal. That had not just opinions, but research. That wasn't just information, but Stop. it had humor. Now you're using data, too? I know. I had 130 sources. I'm like, what? Are, I John deloney this thing. You love a good source. Exactly. Yeah. Well, part of it was I've heard every objection. Well, $1,000 isn't enough, and what's wrong with using my credit card if I pay it off every month? And you need a credit score to live your financial life. And so I went, on top of all the anecdotal experience from millions of our audience and fans, there's also research to back up why the debt snowball works, yeah. research to back up that you spend more when you use a credit card. So I bust the myths about credit scores, car loans, credit cards, student loans, auto loans, mortgage traps, investing traps, marketing and consumerism, and then show people how to break free from all that and live a more peaceful life and build wealth and ditch debt and buck the system. There you go. And deprogram all the crap we learned growing up, learn all the stuff we didn't learn growing up the right way, all that financial literacy. And it's all there in about uh, 300 pages that will breeze by. And uh, we've got an audio book, ebook, and you get all of that free when you pre-order. So it's just 20 bucks to pre-order the book, and you get a whole bunch of goodies with it, and uh, 100 bucks worth of bonuses, including three months of every dollar premium. So you can go check that out at RamseySolutions.com slash store, and I appreciate all the support, comments, messages from all of you so far letting me know that you pre-ordered it and you're sending it to your friends and family means the world. Let's get to the phones. Dustin is right down the road in Nashville, Tennessee. What's going on, Dustin? Hey, George. Hey, John. How are you all? Great. How are you? I'm great. I just had a quick question about manual underwriting. Let's do it. This is my Super Bowl. So, uh, I've heard... It's not real. <laughs> I've heard Jade say before um, that, you know, when you cut up your credit cards, your score takes about a year to drop to zero. So my question is, my wife and I are on baby step two. Uh, we're set to pay off all our debt of November of 24. Awesome. Um, and so uh, once we get to the mortgage process, right, um, you know, we cut up our credit or uh, not then, but we'll cut up our credit cards and it'll take about a year. So, but Jada said, you know, if you have a bad score, it will be a harder time when we go to do the uh, manual underwriting process if it hasn't reached all the way to zero yet. Yeah. So to do a no score loan, they won't let you do it if you have a score. And so would okay. this be both you and your – do you have a spouse? Uh, yes, my wife. Okay. So both of you to get on the loan would have to have no score. And so okay. what this process – and here's the thing. It's not really a problem. It feels like more of a problem, but think about it this way. Mm. Once you're debt-free, you still need to save up three to six months of expenses in an emergency fund. You still need to save up a big down payment. So it's probably going to take a year to do all that anyways, isn't it? Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So it's, it's really a non-issue following the Ramsey baby steps because it takes time to then go from baby step two to 3B where you have the down payment saved. And one other thing to think about in this process, um, what's your, do you have a down payment savings goal? Um, I was uh, kind of, I was actually looking at a calculator today. So probably roughly 20% down is what you all recommend. So it'd probably be like 80. Okay. And then an emergency fund, have you calculated what that might be? Yes, for us that would be twenty thousand. Okay, for so six you, months. So we have to cash flow another hundred grand 
plus closing costs, plus moving expenses, plus furniture. So this home ownership dream may still be two years away. Okay, gotcha. What's your income? Uh, so household income after taxes um, is 60000 Okay. So one thing I would do if I'm in your shoes is get the income up over the next okay. year or two because that's going to help you get to this down payment savings goal. Because let's say you could save up $1,000 a month for the down payment. That's twelve grand a year. It would take five grand to save mm-hmm. up 60 Right. Five years. So what I want to see is, hey, how do we get $2,000 worth of margin to get to 24000 a year? Now we're talking. That's fifty grand every two years. Boom. What do you do? What do you do for a living, Dustin? Uh, I work in IT. And does your wife work outside the home? Yes. So she uh, she is currently uh, looking for a different job, but she currently works as a speech language pathology assistant. Okay, those are both great careers. I want to see you go. Hey, how do we go? I can find a job in IT making sixty five, and she can go make fifty five or sixty. Now all of a sudden we have six figures to work with, with no debt. Now we've got some margin to throw at this down payment savings goal. Right. Yeah, I've been working on certifications just so I have uh, more opportunities to uh, to grow my income. Why don't you work here at Ramsey Solutions? I've looked at it. That's an option. You're right here in Nashville. Just yeah. throwing it out there. We got a lot of IT people, so. There you go. But yeah, it's going to take a while, Dustin. So I wouldn't worry as much about manual under uh, about that process of will I have a score or not because it's far enough away that you won't. Here's one thing to do. Make sure all of your accounts are closed. Pull your credit report. You can do it at annualcreditreport.com and pull that for free to see do I have any accounts open that I forgot about that weren't fully closed because that will affect whether or not you still have a score. So thanks for that. Oh, that's good, John. This is a question that this one boggles people's minds. And Jade Warshaw and I, and you, we've we've done this where you get a manual underwriting, no score loan because once you get out of debt, you don't have a credit score, and we get a lot of flack for it. And again, this is something I cover in the mortgage chapter of my new book. And people go, "Well, it's, you're going to have terrible terms. It can't be done. No lenders do it." And I go. You've never done it, people. How are you coming at me? <laughs> I'm telling you I did it, and it wasn't that hard. So manual underwriting just means that it's not automated through AI and technology. It doesn't run through software. It's a real person, the underwriter, looking at your John's financial situation going, all right, John, there's John's tax returns. We see that John makes this income. Here's uh, on-time monthly payments for John's rent and utilities and insurance and child care. All right, let's give John the loan. And here's the... For those non-bankers in the room who say those things, here was here was my moment when I went, ah, okay, the game is rigged. If Dave Ramsey gave you and I a million dollars in cash and we put it in the bank and let it sit for six months, it would not impact our credit score one point. So it has nothing to do with how wealthy you are. It's how all much about debt management. Yes. That's bad. And hey, if you want to get in touch with the folks we trust to do these no-score loans, it's Churchill Church Mortgage. Churchill! Those are the folks to trust. Go to RamseySolutions.com and get in touch with them. to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Dr. John Deloney. We're taking your calls at 888-825-5225. And a friendly reminder for you, we've got the $12 sale happening at the Ramsey store right now at RamseySolutions.com slash store. You can get a bunch of the questions for humans con- conversation cards for as low as 10 bucks. Total money makeover, baby steps millionaires, own your past, change your future for just $12 each. So now's the time to start shopping. And John, we've got a new deck of questions for humans thanksgiving edition we have thanksgiving we're gonna save your holidays we got christmas nothing and we got... can save you from congealed salad that stuff's disgusting okay I that's don't actually the question are. one of the questions no what's been the most awkward thanksgiving dish of your life a hundred percent it was congealed salad and i was at a very southern traditional thanksgiving and so i i didn't know what i was looking at john i it it sometimes not done well is it looks like somebody has already eaten it and then they just put it in jello. It looked like if you took something through a garbage disposal and then just put it in a nice little jello ramekin and called it good. 
uh, I, can't, I can't eat that, but it's on the plate and I have to be, you know, polite. So I took one bite. Yes, I would never have never would you have ever thought. ever smash food around on the plate to make it look like you ate more than you're you did? You're polite. No. That's I, me. I just eat it. How about you? Um, there's a pink salad with like, uh, it's pink and That's has raisins and like yep. marshmallows mm. and, and like little bits of pony and I don't know, eyelids. I don't know what's in it, but Golly. it's just awkward. Yeah, I'll take sweet potato casserole. Now we're talking. Nah, see, I like to rub that on my face. All right, so is it easier to ask for help from family or from friends? Why? Friends, 100%. Why? Uh, there's less baggage attached. There's less, you know, <laughs> less of a trauma bond there. Because with family, there's always like another, There's it's going to un- unroll and unravel a whole nother thing. Uh, gotcha. You know what I mean? If I ask my dad for to help move, he's like, well, who are you movers? And what do you, let me dive into a thousand more details. When a friend just like, yeah, what time? Exactly. That's it. That's all. I just want that to be that simple. I'm with, or, hey dad, um, what's the, uh, what's your thought on X, Y, Z? I taught you that back with, all right, right. Just, yeah. Yeah. So I, I love family. I rarely ask them for things. <laughs> just less on the line with friends. There I'm you go. You. I don't want to, I'd rather you know, sour those relationships and family is, I guess, what I'm <laughs> trying to say. You can get new friends. You're stuck yeah. with your family. Oh, that was fun. You can check out that deck of cards at RamseySolutions.com slash store and get them in time for Thanksgiving. Joseph is in Chicago. Joseph, what's going on? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I just have a question on my student loans. So I have about 58000 in student loans. It's at a really low interest rate, 2.6%. Um, and I'm set to pay it off uh, by August 2026. My monthly payment is about 1900 I also have a home loan of 380000 at 6%. And I'm just wondering if I should just bite the bullet and pay off the rest of my student loans. I've already paid off about 100 so I have about 100000 in cash. Also, I have 160000 in 401k. Um, but I'm just wondering if I should do that or keep it in the market, earning 5 7%. Half of it's in a high interest savings, so I'm earning 5% there. Um, It's just that low interest rates really. I would pay them off before the day is over. Really? And here's why I tell you that. That's not just me making up advice because that's exactly what I did. I cannot tell you. Dude, this – The sole tax on your amygdala is worth more than the 2.1% extra money you're earning in this little weird snapshot in history in a high-yield savings account over the interest rate you have on these loans. Every time uh, every time a stock ticker rolls by that has something about forgiveness or for this, you look up, your heart rate increases, your body fills up with cortisol and adrenaline because that's that involves you. I literally did not look up other than to hear from hurting people about the Biden forgiveness plan because I paid him off. Just didn't, I mean, just didn't, didn't care. And that's worth yeah. any percentage of money that I could have earned in a high yield savings account, period. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, that's kind of the path I've been leaning towards. It's, it's just, uh, by the end of the day, I, I paid off. All right, I think that's probably the best advice. Have you done the math on what you would actually earn? Um, it'd be about like an extra maybe five thousand a year. Well, you're making five. You said you have a hundred thousand in cash and savings, making five percent, right? Yeah, I got sixty five in a uh, brokerage account, and then I got thirty five. Dude, you have way too much money to still be having debt around your neck. It just doesn't make sense. You're too successful, and you're too smart. What is your What is your degree in? Uh, I have a law degree. I'm an attorney. Yeah. How much do you make? Um, three hundred, maybe three thirty with bonus. Dude, <laughs> Dude why, why do you have Why do you have student loans, man? Well, I mean, it was 165, so I've already paid off 110. But like August 2026 sounds like an eternity away. Like I don't even know, <laughs> bro. Be, hey, I'm gonna be. <laughs> Listen, I was a dean of students at a law school for years. Okay, so I I get it. Choose to be free for the first time in your life, man. Owe nobody anything. And then if you decide to reduce your billables hours by X. Or your partner says, hey, we're going to need you to do this before we consider You can go, I'm not doing that. 
because <laughs> I don't owe anybody anything. Here's a fun exercise, Joseph. Go make an every dollar budget where there's no debt in the picture and you make $380,000. <laughs> and then tell me that you would go back in time and go, yeah, I'll take the debt at a low interest rate for fun. Man, if I'm in your shoes, I'm going to use this incredible income and this incredible you know, stockpile of cash that you have and go, I'm going to pay off these student loans. I'm going to start attacking the house and I'm going to be a Baby Steps millionaire in no time. And you should be making 380 instead of hanging on to debt for the next three, four, five years because of a low interest rate. Hey, you know why? You know who makes you go to work tomorrow? The government. Because you owe them. <laughs> what a sucker, dude. Pay, pay them off today. You have $100,000 in cash. You could be debt free today, right? Except for your house. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, give me the final number. You owe about 55 left on them. Is that right? 58. Yeah, I mean, I guess my only thing is if I have 100000 earning 5 6% over the next three years, I'll earn 15000 in interest and, you know, dividend. You make $380,000. I mean, the five grand a year is not changing your life. It's fun money. That's, okay, do this. That's true. Don't go to a bar for six months. There's your $5,000. <laughs> it's also true. Or get one of those suits, just don't replace it. That's your five thousand dollars. Yeah, dude, my dissertation was on the mental health of attorneys. I know, I know. And here's what I'm telling you: choose freedom over being right. Choose freedom over two point one percent difference between um, what you owe the government versus what you're making in a high yield account right now. Choose peace because you go to war every day that's what you do for for guys like me i call you and say help and you go i will i got you and so the greatest gift you can give yourself when you are a hired hand when you are somebody who all you do all day is go to battle for other people the greatest gift you can give yourself is a good night's sleep is peace in your house and when you owe money to the government and they're telling you no nah, you're gonna get these 2200 billable hours because you owe us <laughs> you owe me mm. Bro, take just take that off the table. I'd be debt free before the afternoon is over. And by the way, you'll still have forty thousand dollars in the account. Cry me a river with hundred dollar bills, Joseph. <laughs> You're good. I'm proud of you, John, man. This Congratulations. Is big, I've I've seen people post this. They go, I have a mortgage at two point seven five percent. I'm gonna stay in this house forever. And I go, golly, you've locked yourself in a prison over an interest rate? Exactly. You have changed yourself. So if you want to move, you're like, no, because then we have to take on a bigger interest rate. I can't move, I'm stuck. What kind of life have you built for yourself when you don't have options? Be free. Choose freedom. Just be free. Forget like the interest Wallace. rate. Jeez. Freedom. I know. Goodness gracious. It's available to you, but it starts with going, it's more than math. I'm solving for freedom here. Solving and that, for peace. that part is a partial math equation, but it takes some getting out of your own head and getting out of your own way and going, we could have all of our income back. That's our greatest wealth building tool. Why are we giving it to lenders thinking that we're winning? That's not how it works. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Dr. John Deloney, and we've got some special guests on the debt-free stage. It's Greg and Kim. How are you guys? Just fine. Just nervous. fine. Nervous. No. You got, it's John and I. What do you got to be nervous about? You're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. And you're debt-free. Yes. Yeah. That's one debt more free. reason to be peaceful. That's it. Is. Okay. Tell us about it. Where are you guys from? Shreveport, Louisiana. Wonderful. Thanks right for making I-20. the trip. I-20. 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 This man yes. knows his interstates. I know. Here's what I know. I know where the cooking is good in the United States, in Shreveport. Yes. They know yes. how to eat. Yes. I love it. Okay, so tell us, how much debt did you guys pay off? 124129 Woo! And how long did that take? Three years. Three wow. years. Wow. Yes. Okay, and what was the range of income during that time? Between 70 to 108. Awesome. What do you guys do for a living? 
I'm in retail, and I work for the local jail. Cool. And I'm a director of uh, member services at my church and an, a local nonprofit organization. Wonderful. Okay, what kind of debt was this 124? It was student loan debt. <laughs> Actually, parent plus loan. But oh. the good thing about that is it was a fraudulent school, and so we were able to you get it. You got the money back. Yes. yes. Well, we were able to get it forgiven completely. Yeah. So That's yes. incredible. That's yes. the silver lining of getting a fake degree. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And it was half. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, cars. Yep. Medical. Furniture. My dumb mistakes. Furniture? Yes. yes. What? Do you still have the furniture? No, no. I, Some of it. <laughs> it broke down. Oh, gosh. So it was sitting on the curb, and I cried every day I came home until they picked it up. If you're still paying payments on furniture that broke down, that's you're breaking down. <laughs> yes, I was. Oh, I was. my goodness. Yeah. All right, so how did you, you get hooked normal. up with this, this crazy crew of people? Crazy crew of people. That's us. That's oh, us. Oh, okay. Yes, that's us. Uh, well, actually, we were introduced by a friend uh, years ago, and her husband re- really wasn't on board. So my I husband, wasn't, I wasn't on board either. <laughs> no, I mean you had, you had some uh, some uh, footstools, some ottomans to buy. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, three years ago, something clicked. Yeah. Well, how did that happen? Well, to be honest with you, it was years ago. We were doing Davish. Davish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In and out, in and out. Yeah. It was like a buffet. You're like, right. I'll take a little bit of this, right. but I'm going to avoid uh, this piece over here. You didn't go yeah. all in. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then when 2020, when the COVID hit, we had to stop working and just kind of like, we're, we're broke. We have nothing. We were, it made us look at life totally different. And I told her, I said, well, I guess I ain't got no choice to get on board now because we don't have nothing. So she started working it out, and I started grudgingly doing it, embarrassed, but I did it, and we are out of that. Hey, so. okay, hold on. I, you, you blew by this. I grew up uh, right across the line over there in Houston. Okay. So my guess is we got some of the similar messages. That is a hard thing to say. I'm broke. I got to submit. Yes. I want to know what was in your heart when that was going on, because that, uh, that is a rare statement coming right. from a tall, handsome man. I had to swallow my pride and realize, hey, we're in debt. I mean, there was no other way out of it. I mean, it was embarrassing, and couldn't, we had to tell a lot of family members we can't do it because we don't have it. And, you know, I just had to look her in the eye and say, baby, we, we're, we're in trouble. And Can I tell you, like, uh, like I'm getting goosebumps here. Like, I, uh, Paying off debt's awesome, and I know Sir Ramsey's and all that. That right there... I'm so proud of you. And that sets a model for every man sitting at home right now whose wife doesn't know how bad it really is yeah. and they can't breathe. And so they get loud, they get mad, they they snap at their kids. Right. There's another way, and it's you looking in the mirror and putting both hands on that on that on that uh, counter there in the bathroom, looking in the mirror and going, This ends with me. Right. 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 I'm proud of you, man. That's right. big time. That's big time. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So what were the tactical steps you guys took? Because to do this plan, you got to live on less than you make. You got to cut expenses. You got to go make more income. What were the keys for you guys? Yeah, we both have four jobs between both of us. So, wow. um, yeah, getting extra income in and really sitting down, like he said, during COVID, we had a chance to just stop and breathe and really look at our bills. And we're like, man, you know, we we have to start somewhere, you know, and, and I'm an FBU coordinator. Uh, I also taught, um, I teach foundations as well. So I knew what to do. It's just, um, and we had started, but like I said, we were doing Davish, Davish. Yeah. And so uh, when we sat down and really, really decided to, we, could, we need to do this, you know, then that's when it was full speed ahead. Right. I mean, what was the dumbest thing y'all, y'all realized y'all had payments going out to? Oh, gosh. Uh, it was a television, a television, a wash and dryer, and other things that I said, well, we need this now. We'll worry about it later. And it was like, wow. But then when they broke down and they're sitting on the curb waiting to be picked up, oh. I'm like, man, that's, that was, yeah. dude, you stupid. But still paying. <laughs> so, but we still pay. But the thing about it was I knew she was serious when I opened my wallet and my credit card was gone. I'm Whoa. Like, Where's my credit? Oh, I cut it up. But you didn't, you went. Yeah, no need to call the fraud department. You robbed him. I love it. I love so, it. I had nothing to negotiate with. So, we, <laughs> so oh, you guys are incredible. Right. But that's right. a big sacrifice. A lot of people, they that credit card is a security blanket. Right. That's going to be their savior. And, and right. what if there's an emergency? I'm like, 
Uh, you just bought a TV and a washer dryer, and you live in La Vida Loca. Let's not. Right. We'll get, yeah. you're, right. You don't seem too worried about emergencies. Right. Right. Let, let me ask you this question. That's amazing. You've got two beautiful kids over here. Right. My guess is you had to tell them no. And what culture tells me as a parent of two young kids right now is if you say the word no, your kids just spontaneously combust and they evaporate and they'll hate you forever. Yeah. They look to be doing all right. They look like they're living and breathing. Right. They'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll get over it. Yeah, but we, we, yeah we actually have five kids. We have three grown kids. Okay. And they've been out of the house. Uh, yeah. but, As the parent yeah. plus loans. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I bet the relationship's different now that those loans are out of the way. Right. right. So much right. different. Thanksgiving yes. dinner is yeah. going to be different this year. Right. Tastes a lot better. Right. Yeah. Right. We wow. We, what a beautiful family. We travel better now. We don't fuss now, you know, because I'm <laughs> mad because of my debt and hope, getting her all upset, so we just... Wow. You know, yeah. We drove up to Shreveport just cracking jokes all the way. Yeah, the great drive. Yeah. 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 Well, you got... I, I don't know if you were this joyful before, but you sure are joyful now. Yeah. 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 And I hope a part of that's because you're living a peaceful life without payments. Feels good. That's yes, amazing. It does. Yes. Feels good. So what do you t- tell that couple? They've been Dave-ish. They know. Their friends told my Dave. They know. What, they're listening to this show, and they're still like, yeah, I'm just... I'm not ready. What do you tell them the key to getting out of debt is if they're, if they're serious about it? You know, definitely budgeting. That's number one to budget. Um, But also, you know, don't despise small beginnings. You know, it's hard at the beginning to start something new, you know, but once you get going, you know, and just persevere and and get through it. Now, when I do a budget, it's just like that. It takes no time, you know, Uh, but um, just hang in there, persevere. And to our men, I just say, swallow your pride. Mm -hmm. Just reality. I mean, when you can't tell your wife, I can't even buy, buy you a rose. Because I don't have no money for it. Just swallow your pride. Mm-hmm. And she did. She, I swallowed my pride, and it was like, whoa, okay. She still loves me, so I'm good. <laughs> That's now, right. she, now you can buy her several dozen roses, right? right? He did yesterday. It's our Aww. 35th anniversary wedding oh, Congratulations. Oh, you. right. You're smooth, too. You don't owe nobody any money, and you're smooth. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now we're eating good, with, uh, and we're not making payments on it later. Right, yeah. right. Well, we've got a live and give box for you to celebrate this incredible milestone. It includes Baby Steps Millionaires, the Total Money Makeover, and Financial Peace University. You can get someone else's journey started with that right that's exciting well let's get the kids up what are their names and ages christian is 13 christina is 16 both of you guys have a strong shoe game well done (laughs) and strong parents and you they got to watch you guys do this stuff and we say more is caught than taught yeah and so they know the sacrifice mom and dad made to set them up for a better future well he actually cut up our last credit card so he definitely knows (laughs) way to go christian i bet that felt good oh my goodness there's a picture of him if you're watching on youtube that's incredible (laughs) all right here we go you guys ready Ready. Ready. All right. Loud and proud. Greg and Kim, Christina and Christian, $124,000 paid off in three years, making 70 up to 108. They swallowed their pride. They got four jobs. They're not fooling around, and they are debt-free. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're We're debt-free! That put a little pep in my step, John. I don't know about you. Dude, I'm hyped. That dude's awesome. That's why we do what we do. Freedom is available to you, America, but you got to stop being ish. You got to get serious. You got to swallow your pride. And you got to make the sacrifices. But it's all worth it to have that kind of smile on your face at the end of the day. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day comes from Acts 5.42. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Mark Twain said, don't let schooling interfere with your education. Ooh, mm. Mark Twain burn. Sick burn to the guy with two PhDs. Mark Twain burn. I love it. That's strong. Strong content. Mark Twain still hits. I don't care what you say. He does, but he also suggested you, I don't know, wreck Reed every once in a while, so. 
Oh, he I, haven't gets re- I haven't read his work, just his quotes. Exactly, yeah. He speaks in tweets, so. He kind of, uh, he actually doesn't. He, he doesn't. He writes in uh, books. Well, before book, Twitter was form. around, we had Mark Twain. It was a better time. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Let's get to the phones. Mikey is in San Diego. What's going on, Mikey? Are you with us? Hey, Mikey. Well, we're... Hey, there, you there are. he is. What's you up, Mikey? Us, man. Hi, how are you? Good. How can we help? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I recently got married, um, and we've been expecting twins. And so I'm trying to prepare for the twins and have like a five or seven year plan to, to get a house. I don't have, um, we both combined don't have too much in debt that I, um, I think we should be able to pay it off within at least, a, I feel like a year or two. Um, it's, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's around 40 K in debt combined. Okay. And what's your household income? Um, so since she's working or she's not working right now, uh, it's just me. It's 150, 150,000. Awesome. Great income. So why is it going to take two years to clean up 40 K making 150? Um, it's just because of the, uh, I have a rent. Um, that's at, uh, 30, it's like 3,100 and then the utilities and, um, whatever. Um, I don't have a car payment, so it's pretty easy for me to like cover all the regular bills on top of, uh, what I have to try and pay down my, um, uh, debt, but she, I'm trying to get to her debt, um, as fast as possible so I can help her. Oh, well, I'm confused. Her debt, my debt. Are you guys married? Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> Our debt. I'm still getting used to it. Hey, okay, you're cool, newlyweds. Guys. That's cool. I, I understand. So the 40K in debt is both of y'all's debt combined? Yes. Okay, and what kind of debt is that? Uh, it's mostly consumer and then her, I mean, our uh, student loan. Okay. How come she's not working? Uh, well, she's pregnant right now, so... Um, she had to pause what she was doing and she, um, left her jobs and then she just, uh, qualified for, um, disability. So we have that coming in now. Is she in um, poor health? No. Uh, I mean, she's pregnant with the, the twins now. I'm sorry. But was she doing something that was physical that she could no longer do? Oh, yes. She was a massage therapist. Okay. I I mean I'm looking through the glass right now at one of our people behind the board who's pregnant and um she's showing up kicking butt. I know every every situation is different, but I get that man being a massage therapist carrying twins. I I can't even I can't wrap my head around that. Um, but it might be <laughs> for a couple more months to find something right. And that's not me being insensitive. That's me just looking at, y'all have a math problem. It's a pretty tough situation to solve, especially in one of the most expensive real estate markets in the United States. And so y'all have some dreams and you have some goals and there's some also realities to those dreams and goals, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So make 150 K you've got 40 K. Do you have anything in cash? In the bank? No, not right now. I mean, um, so I have some side in investments. Um, I didn't want to take out of 401k, obviously. I have, like, my own personal investment account, and then I have, like, a bunch of um, uh, trading cards that I used to invest into. What's in the personal investment could, account? Yeah. Is that just a non-retirement brokerage account? Yeah. Uh, it's like a Robin Hood, so uh, there's only, like, seven 7000 in there. Oh, only 7000 That's a lot of money that Pull you can use to throw the, at the debt. Right now. Okay, we just got down to thirty-three. What kind of cards you got? Oh, uh, so I got Pokemon, uh, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, and then another um, game called, like, uh, Flesh and Blood. I had somebody I actually about... call into the show the other day that paid off their debts by selling um, Pokemon cards. Not even playing. You can find it on YouTube. That's how, a real How call. much money do you think all of your cards are worth? Truthfully. Uh, well, I know. Um, Just give me a ballpark. Uh, I, Five grand? It's about like, I'd say 70K. $70,000? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know the market's a little like rough right now, but it's about 70 i I'm breaking the equipment here. I'm so excited, Mikey. Listen, dude. <laughs> do, you, do you understand that your math equation just changed? 
You have 7,000 in Robinhood, you have 70,000 in trading cards, and you have 40,000 in debt. Let's go back to third grade math. You're about to be yeah. father of twins, twin baby girls. If I'm you, I'm like, well, my world just changed. I'm no longer in the trading card business. I'm in the dad business, and I want to set my wife up, these kids up for the best future possible. And that means when this baby's born, we have no debt and a giant emergency fund. You got those cards for this moment. Right now. And let me tell you something. Both George and I are parents of young kids. The single most important investment you can ever make from this point forward is time. Time just goes away. And even um, if if I find a a 20-year-old, he would not trade places. A broke 20-year-old would not trade places with Warren Buffett, who has $100 billion and he's 93. Why? Why? Because of time. And dude, you can accelerate two years of your life by selling trading cards. You cannot get those years back, especially years with twins. I would have those cards on the market before Sunday strikes midnight. And I'd probably sell them a little bit under value just to get them out of the house and start getting some cash in. And you will be debt free within 10 days. You just bought yourself a year. You bought yourself two years. Your life back. Because you just told us that, man, things are tight. I'm not, I'm gonna, it's going to take me two years to get rid of this debt. Or we leapfrog this whole thing. You pay off all your debt this week. You still have 37000 left if you do this right. That's your emergency fund, right? Now you're saving for a, for a house starting November 15th. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to do any of this, or are we just wasting air right now? No, I think, I mean, everybody's been telling me that. Um, what are you scared of, dude? Years, what are you scared of? I feel, <laughs> well, it's because it feels like, you know, a 401k for me at this point, because it's so What does? Stable, the trading but, cards? I mean, having, <laughs> yeah. You know what else used to be but, stable? Beanie Babies. Google that. Dude, we don't know. Right. What if what if Charizard gets canceled and all of a sudden your precious card is worth nothing? Yes. Yeah, they're going to start canceling Pokemon. That's going to be the new thing. Okay. Dude, I you're think... sitting you're sitting on 2 years of your you life. You know what's a 401k, Mikey? A 401k. And so you're going to get there in no time. I would quit playing games on Robinhood. I'd quit the trading cards. You're a grown man with twin twin baby girls. Let's start acting like it. And you're going to have 150 grand coming in with no debt, with money in the bank saved. Get your kids a house. Your wife can stay home if she wants to with no stress. It's not even a conversation because you have options at that point. Earlier, earlier, brother, we did a debt-free screen with this guy named Greg, and he's one of my new heroes. And he said, I asked him, what's the key? And he said, men, swallow your pride and do what's right. This is that moment, dude. This is that moment. We did our best, John. We'll see if it works. <laughs> it's our moment. Oh. Well, hey, before we go, I want to remind folks that this book just launched this week. I'm really proud of it. It's called Breaking Free from Broke, the get ultimate it, it, guide to more money and less stress. And you can get it at RamseySolutions.com slash store. It'd, be a, it'd mean the world if you'd support it and pre-order it. We'll bribe you with $100 worth of bonus items, including the audiobook and ebook, And uh, it means the world. John, happy weekend to you, my friend. Congratulations on getting the book out, man. Thank you. Feels good. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Until next time, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. Generously.